We're here at PRGE with Andrew Pauly, Armscar Coder, with his new game, Raptor. So how have you been? How's, uh, how's the convention been? Uh, really exciting. This is our first time. I'm here with my son. Excellent. Uh, we've been playing the arcade game Fire Truck. Yeah, yeah. And if your house is on fire and I'm in the back, you better have good insurance because <laughs> it's going down. Um, Real one difficult. Of, yeah, one of the cool things about this is, you know, I grew up with the Atari 2600 yep. and the NES, and then I had a Macintosh Classic. Yep. And I went off to college, and that was kind of the, the crux of my gaming experience. Right, yeah. So when I got back into the Atari world, I also discovered these other worlds, too. Yeah, yeah. And I was never a big arcade guy, so something like this is kind of a this, mind-blowing. This, this is the mecca for yeah. video game enthusiasts, that's for sure. So yeah, we're having a blast. We're and, having a blast. And how does it feel to have your game on display in this kind of place and seeing people come and play it? I, I don't know. My, my, my vocabulary is not very good to begin with, but you know, rewarding is yeah. something that comes to mind. Um, kind of makes all those mornings I got up really early to work on the game. Like, okay, yeah, it was worth it. You yeah. know, with, with Raptor, I just really wanted to make something that was fun. Yeah. And, oh, it is. And it's I think, I wonder, you know, how other developers think. Like, sometimes we get caught up in, you know, scan lines and and collisions, and you know, we need to step back and say, hey, is the game fun? That is the most important at the end of the day. Yeah. It doesn't matter about graphics, sound. It's all about playability. Right. And I've seen games that are pretty much just blocks that are amazing. Sure. But if you're going to have a fun game with amazing graphics like Raptor, oh. uh, especially packed into such a small package, it is 4K, right? It is. And uh, what, what, what um, like going from your, your other 4K game, why did you continue on with go making another 4K? Um, I, I kind of wanted to see, like, hey, can I do this again? Because I'm not like these other guys here. You know, I met John, I met Chris Walton, yeah. uh, Todd Fermansky, I met you know, some other developers here. They, those are the smart guys. They're, They're all really like good. software developers by trade. Yeah. You know, they're engineers, software engineers. I'm an engineer, but I'm a mechanical engineer. Right, yeah. So I, I like to think of myself as a logic guy, but my coding experience is very limited and different from those guys. So yeah. when I got done with Dalgon, I was like, wow, is that a fluke? Or I can't really do this again. <laughs> so I learned yeah. it wasn't a fluke, but instead of taking a year and a half, it took me a year. Yeah, it's uh, always that second time jitters. It's like, uh-oh, what if I make another one and it doesn't work out this time? Yeah, and uh, you know, and when I look at it, I think the difference was of the four to six months is for doggone it, it took me four to six months to really know what I was doing. Right. So I kind of went into it like, oh, I'm gonna have this in the game, this in the game. And I didn't really know the limitations. Yeah. So I got into it, I had to change a lot of stuff. Where the Raptor, it turned out mostly the way I envisioned it. Yeah. Um, instead of the sky sweeper, I was gonna have like sky mines. Yeah. Um, that you had to maneuver around, but I ended up going with the sky sweeper. That was a more like aggressive type of antagonist. So, uh, I mean, why 4K? And, yeah. You know, I, I'm gonna do banks. Is it a challenge, or is it just like the simplicity? Well, I think for my wife, she won't divorce me because there's a finish line with 4K. You know, you get to a certain <laughs> point, true. and you say you cannot fit any more in the game. Yeah. Whereas, like, okay, you can go to eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Just 32, keep going and just going. Keep going. Yeah. So. You know, doggone, I kind of had a, what I wanted to do with Raptor right now. I was like, well, I'm going to start here and see where it goes. And I was able to add a few things, but you know, you, you have a, a box. Yeah. And if you fit in a box, it's good. And yeah. it, it, it really just it doesn't allow for the sprawl of development. That's right. It, it, there is that limit, and, and you have to stop at a certain point. And yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. And that's what the 2600 is kind of about. There are very hard limitations of what you can do on it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, these guys here, and you look at some of these other games, yeah. they are pushing the envelope and the boundaries of that. Very much so, uh, yeah. To the point that I don't even understand how they're doing it. No, they're as far as I'm concerned, they're magicians. Oh, no, yeah, that wizard. And they're just waving a wand, yeah. and, and, and magic comes out of this box. You have a lot of respect for those guys. Oh, huge. Um, and, um, like, the aesthetics of this, the new game, Raptor, are very clean and very reminiscent of 
um, Activision games of the 80s. Um, that, that's a couple bit. <laughs> oh, it, I fully, I, I, I say that with confidence because it is very clean. The, the, um, the sprites are really, really clean and small and detailed. Um, was that an aesthetic you were going for in, in this yeah, new game? Yeah, I really, really did focus on some of those details. Yeah. Uh, I had well, one of my early playtesters tell me my, my tank, my first version of the tank was no good. <laughs> oh, and you no. never you never want to hear that. Yep. But but you have to listen to the feedback so you go back yep. and you redraw it. So yes, and one of the reasons I wanted to keep them small is I could get more enemies on the screen. Right. If I went bigger, more vertical with, space. Yes. Yeah. Because they're you know they're traveling in horizontal lines. So if I went bigger and more detailed, there would be less action. And I think yep. What makes Raptor kind of fun is when you have a lot of them on the screen, you're trying to shoot them all up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I do spend a lot of time on the aesthetics. Um, yeah. Not that, you know, there are little blocks, but yeah. making sure the photos are clean, like you say, and everything's crisp. Um, I do try to uh, hide the horizontal move bars. Yep, yep. So, uh, so Again, yeah. Again, an Activision thing. That, yeah, I yeah. mean, a lot of all the uh, homebrews have developed that. I haven't seen a uh, an H move bar in never. Yeah. I've just never seen. Yeah, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of picking up the scraps of everybody else. Um, now, your your first game, doggone it, was kind of like boom, here it is. Now with this one, how was it uh, the experience of like? having play testers uh, give feedback and, and uh, the difference between the first game and this game in, in terms of that? I think it was similar, except I had the, the play test period was much longer. Yeah. Um, because I think with Dog On It, you know, there's a story behind it, as you know, and yeah. I had a pretty good vision of what it wanted, to, what it was going to be like. With Raptor, I thought I was done. And one of my players said, hey, it'd be really nice if you had a status bar. And I'm right. like, no. Feature creep. And I'm yep. like, no. <laughs> and then you know, I had to sit back and say, Andrew, you know, this is why you have playtesters. You listen to them. Right. So yeah, I went yeah. back to the code, looked at it, and said, you know what? I can do this. Crunch it down a bit. And you go yeah. back and you, you do. You do code optimize. You might make a sacrifice here or there. Yeah. And I tell you what, listening to that you know, playtester made the game better. Yeah. So uh, I was actually done writing the game, I think, in November of... 21, but I didn't release it until March of 22. Right, yeah. So we were playtesting up to that point, but we just kept playtesting and playtesting it. I, I had more worries about bugs creeping up in this one. With Dong Hong, I played it so much, I knew it didn't have a bug. <laughs> you knew it inside and out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it plays exceptionally well, and it feels right at home in the 80s Activision realm and I think people coming up to it yeah speaking of that people coming up to it, what is the reaction of people looking at it and playing it did it did it seem like people are like oh I get this game immediately I know this kind of genre it's shooting it's moving yeah I think most people say it's pretty easy pick up uh, I think one of the things I really struggled with was uh, the um, boomerang bomb activation right yeah. so I actually was kind of cursing it myself. I, I was like, oh, this is going to work. And I caught myself accidentally setting them off. So I spent a lot of time on that. And of right, course, yeah. trying to keep the code small. So now you have to push it twice, but it doesn't detonate until you let go the second time. Yep. The struggles of one button. Yes. <laughs> right? But, yeah. you know, I, I took the time. Like, that, that, I was saying it took me a month. You know, of course, you know, yeah. real life was getting in the way sometimes. But I was like, yeah. I got to fix this. So I did. Yeah. Uh, you know, people, I, I think games are... Uh, on first review, like picked up very well, if if they know what to do about the bat. You know, yes, I'm guilty. I, I told somebody, I think it, I can't remember what the game was. I didn't even read their manual. <laughs> you know, nobody likes to read the manual. No, you want to just get in and play it and right. have fun with it. But some of these games are getting really complex. Oh, like yeah, like, Grizzards. Exactly, it's an RPG. You you really have to know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean when when he when he makes a post on Atari Age with the update, that oh exhausts me. Yeah. Like, yes, it's like I a 4K know. game in itself. Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's well received, and that's what a developer wants to hear at the end of the day. Yeah, um, you want people to enjoy your game. Because if, if they're not enjoying it, yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's a process. I enjoy the process. Yep. Some days better than others. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I really just wanted something fun for people to play. And, and you know, when they, they say, hey, yeah, it's a blast, that, that, that feels good. Yeah, and it's always uh, satisfaction seeing it on a cartridge on display at a place like this. 
and people going up well, there and enjoying it. I mean, just like meeting you guys and seeing <laughs> these people, it is surreal, really. It is, and especially this year after three years and so many developers here, it's, oh, it's, it's a real joy. Yeah, I mean, like yourself and all the other people here, it's it's quite a it's a culmination of everybody's work, and we're all celebrating everybody's else's well, work. Well, I mean, you know, it's a great community. It uh, really is. I mean, we got you know some of the guys that you'd be on Mount Rushmore here. <laughs> yes. But you yeah. know, when you look at a mountain, you, you you say you got these Mount Rushmore guys, but the base of the mountain is made of so many people. Yeah, it's a lot of support, you know, from the developers to the oh, beta yeah. testers to just the, the people who are enjoying the games. It, it, the whole community is made up of everyone, and yeah. especially Al Russo holding it all together. Yeah, he, he's underneath the mountain, like, holding right. it up. Yeah, that's a perfect description. I Both is, hands struggling. Yeah. Well, I asked his wife, does he ever sleep? <laughs> I don't think he does. Yeah. I don't know what he does, but uh, he, he's a machine. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's a great community. It is. Uh, I'm really, I mean. I'm glad to be a part of it. Oh, I, I was yes. glad to find it. Me too, yeah. Uh, it's like, oh, this this feels right. This is a really welcoming community. And I've, I've seen some communities very toxic, but this is, everybody's super, super friendly. Well, even like, you know, I'm a, the name like Carl Garrison. He's yep. out there helping other people. Oh my God, yeah, so and, helpful. And Carl uh, there's excellent. a lot of guys like that. And, that's what makes it so cool and so fun. Yeah, everybody wants everybody to be better. Yeah. Nobody's keeping secrets. They want your game to be better. They want their game to be together better. And the sharing amongst the developers Definitely. is astounding. Yeah. Yeah. So. so thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me. It's and, glad. Uh, it was great to meet you. <laughs> it's great to meet you as well in person after all this time. I know. <laughs> I know. We're on and the I'm East Coast. I'm glad there's a place like this where we can meet. Yeah. Yeah, it it's means really it's, nice. uh, we're on the East Coast, so it's a long trip for us. It but, is a bit of a trip, yeah. So yeah. we'll see. We'll try to make it out some, some more. But. Yeah, excellent. So I hope to see you next year here. Yeah. We'll uh, see. Uh, I'm not going to have a game ready, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see where we go from here. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank and we'll you. see you online. All right, thanks. Okay.